Welcome to Great Loop Lifestyles. This is the Thousand Islands edition, and I'm Kim Russo with America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. The Thousand Islands was absolutely one of my favorite areas we have visited so far on the Great Loop. It is a beautiful area with stunning scenery that straddles the U.S. and Canadian border. So many of the Thousand Islands are really just small rocks, essentially, that are sticking up through the water, and many of them have houses on them. Our first stop in the Thousand Islands was Clayton, New York, and I absolutely fell in love with this little town. We stayed at the Clayton Harbor Municipal Marina, which is an AGLCA sponsor, and this marina is just top notch. The dock help was wonderful. Everybody was courteous and polite and just really an enjoyable experience. The marina has a walkway that leads right to the heart of the little downtown area. And really the big attraction for boaters here is the Antique Boat Museum. So I'll tell you a little bit about our tour of that in just a few minutes. First of all, I do want to cover some of the great restaurants we found here in Clayton. Channel Side is where we had our first dinner. Food was really good here and it was just a beautiful view. Outdoor seating, um, lots of porches, looking out over the St. Lawrence River. So just a beautiful spot and the food was delicious. Another, just across the street from Channel Side, is Hop Spot. This is an old mansion that has been restored. It is a bed and breakfast, but it also specializes in gourmet burgers for their restaurant. And it is mostly outdoor seating, so just a beautiful setting, and the weather was delightful, so a lovely meal there as well. And then for breakfast, don't miss Bella's. Bella's is also right along the St. Lawrence River. They have a huge outdoor seating area, lots of different levels of patios and porches, and with the perfect weather and the scenery and the coffee, it was uh, kind of became my happy place for a little while there. Uh, the avocado toast was delicious, and Michael had some amazing blueberry pancakes with, of course, some pure maple syrup, so don't miss Bella's. Uh, really just a nice casual place, self-serve coffee, and they've got lots of baked goods if you are in the mood for those or want to take some with you. If you've been watching, you know that I have been searching for the best ice cream on the Great Loop. There are two places right in this little small town for ice cream. The Scoop has Hershey's ice cream, but they've also got kind of lots of different sundaes and special ways that they present that, including serving it on a donut. And then Clayton Popcorn also had ice cream. These were both great. We've went to both of them and really enjoyed them. Also in the downtown area for coffee, I would recommend Lyric. The atmosphere was great, the coffee was good, and they also have some different specialty syrups and things like that for the coffee. And then don't miss River Rats. This is the cheese store. Great time to stock up if you need some supplies for docktails. You can actually see them making the cheese in the back and they are known for their cheese curds and you can buy the bags there and take them with you and it was delicious. And then finally, this Ace Hardware, which is actually an old department store and they have just about everything you can imagine. We really enjoyed just kind of walking through there and exploring what they had and it's uh, just one of those kinds of shops you can just get lost in for a good amount of time, but also has really useful things that you might need along the way. So moving on then, really kind of the main attraction in Clayton is the Antique Boat Museum. And we were thrilled to have a tour of this area. They've got several different exhibits set up and one right now covers shipwrecks of the Great Lakes and the Thousand Islands area. And that is one of their temporary exhibits. So that will be changed out if you're going in future years. But they also have some exhibits that are set up to look like an old boat show where you can actually board some of the boats. They've got a building all about speed on the water and you can view some of the faster boats that were built uh, back in time and wooden boat era. They've also got a big in-water section and you can kind of gawk over those boats as well. You can even take out a skiff as part of your admission fee to the Antique Boat Museum. So that was also something super interesting there. And they've got a workshop where they fix and maintain and also build these wooden boats. Another uh, top attraction there at the museum is La Duchesse. This is the houseboat that was built by George Bolt. And it was actually never a boat, it's actually a barge. It never had a motor attached. The intention was to uh, tow it to wherever they wanted it to be, and you can tour this here. And you'll hear more about George Bolt as we continue the tour of the Thousand Islands and talk about Bolt Castle. But uh, just 
very interesting to hear the history of this houseboat and the subsequent owners after George Bolt sold it and how they adjusted and, and lived aboard this houseboat. So that was Clayton, New York. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, lots of other little shops too along the way that you should absolutely check out. We couldn't stay at Clayton any longer. It was the 4th of July weekend and we didn't make reservations very far ahead of time. So it was time for us to move on um, because the marina was full. So we kind of just crossed over the uh, Thousand Islands, staying on the U.S. side, but went over to Wellesley Island and tied up at the Thousand Islands Club. Another great marina, um, really superb restaurants at this marina. And they've got a fine dining menu and they've also got a bar menu. The food was spectacular and all of the loopers that I spoke to there also agreed with that. So that was a lovely two night stay. And one of the things that was really um, made it simple from the Thousand Islands Club was to tour Bolt Castle. Again, this was a holiday weekend. It was July 4th. So the boat traffic on the water was pretty insane. You can tie up your own boat at Bolt Castle and there's a lot of dockage, but on a holiday weekend, we really didn't want to attempt that in our boat. And from the Thousand Island Club, it is less than a mile walk to the Bolt Castle Yacht House, which is actually on Wellesley Island. And then from the yacht house to the castle itself, there's a shuttle boat that goes back and forth. So super easy to tour Bolt Castle from there. And some of the highlights are, um, as you'll see here, the castle is absolutely stunning. And if you're not familiar with the story of Bolt Castle, um, George Bolt was a hotelier. He was the manager of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel and also owned some hotels in Philadelphia. And he was building this house as a gift for his wife. She unexpectedly passed away during construction and he basically just stopped construction and he let the mansion sit there kind of um, exposed to the elements a bit, becoming dilapidated. Um, it was uh, prone to having vandals come by. There was lots of graffiti when it was kind of resurrected, so to speak, but it was turned over to the Thousand Islands Authority in the 1970s and they have since been um, basically trying to finish this to what George Bolt had anticipated it to be. Um, thankfully, he left behind some very detailed plans, and that's enabled them to do a really good job uh, making the mansion into what it was once thought to be. Again, the Bolt family never lived here, but you can tour the grounds. You can now tour the first and second floors of the mansion, and the first thing you see when you go inside is this grand stairway. Um, there is an audio tour that you can download on an app that you can play as you walk from room to room. So you'll see the kitchen, you'll see the dining room, you'll see um, the billiards room, all of the different rooms that were set up, the ballroom, and some of the details just absolutely striking. Um, a couple examples in the billiards room, the inlaid floor is stunning. And in uh, the ceiling is also uh, just the attention to detail all over the castle is part of what's truly amazing. On the second floor, you can tour some of the family bedrooms. And then the third and fourth floors are basically as they were found. Uh, they have not been restored. They're hoping to eventually restore them. But I actually found it very interesting to see that dichotomy between what's been finished to what they expected it to be and the state that they found the mansion in. You can see the graffiti on the walls. You can see the walls essentially falling down. So very interesting tour. On the ground, you'll also see the powerhouse, um, which you can tour as well. So really something not to be missed. Whether you come from the yacht house and go over to Bolt Castle or you've arrived at Bolt Castle and take the, the shuttle over to the yacht house, um, the yacht house is also pretty spectacular. There are slips for some of the boats, including La Duchesse. Um, there's a big slip that was meant for that houseboat. And there's also some uh, the caretaker's quarters that you can tour at the yacht house. So, um, and the other thing I should mention is right by the dock uh, at the Bolt Castle, there is some really good ice cream. I believe against it's Hershey's, but on a hot day while you're waiting for the shuttle to take you back across, uh, nothing beats it. So that was enjoyable. And then the final thing that we toured in the Thousand Islands was Singer Castle on Dark Island. 
This was built by the CEO of the Singer Sewing Machine Corporation, and it's almost the polar opposite of Bolt Castle. Um, Bolt Castle is all about the love of the bolts. Um, it's almost fairy tale like And when you tour Singer Castle on Dark Island, um, it feels almost a little bit like a haunted mansion. Um, it is meant to look medieval. There are suits of armor and swords. There are lots of hidden passageways. So for example, when you enter this um, wine closet, if you look to your left, you can actually look down and see one of those hidden passages. And those were primarily meant for the servants to move back and forth unseen. Um, but there were several examples of those in places where if you bent a hook the right way in a closet, a compartment would open to a secret passageway or in the library next to the fireplace, there was a secret passage that opened, you know, it was hidden, uh, and there were a couple of ways to open that. Um, even in the dining room, there's a picture that from standing below, you don't notice that the picture is actually tilted back, but our tour guide flipped on a light to light up behind the picture, and you could see the passageway back there, and that was meant for the servants to be able to check on what was happening in the dining room and see what might, what someone might need. But it just gives it this kind of, uh, a little bit of a creepy feel to it. So uh, another great tour. We did dock our own boat there. Plenty of dockage once again, but there are also tour boats you can take to there. But we arrived early on, I think it was a Tuesday morning, right after the holiday weekend, uh, just to be sure that we had space to tie up. And, and that was well. Um, because the tour boat hadn't arrived yet, we got there when they first opened. So Michael and I basically had our own tour with one of the tour guides because no one else had arrived yet. So another really interesting tour. And then from there, it's just beautiful cruising. So you really can't beat it. I loved seeing the islands that have a little house on them. Um, loved seeing the um, yacht houses. To me, they look like boat garages. So a really wonderful trip to the Thousand Islands. It is certainly a place I can see myself revisiting in future years. So enjoy this as part of your great loop. It's certainly something not to be missed. Thanks for watching.